All right, well, I decided to make this video because so many people who I try to explain what I'm doing in these videos, they, you know, some of the people actually seem like they're interested and they want to learn more, but yet they think they'll never be able to understand it. But in reality, if you can spell and you can do basic math, you can start understanding Gematria and start doing it for yourself. And uh, Zachary K. Hubbard has an awesome video, a little video series that's going to explain it way more in depth than what I'm going to go into. I'm just going to show you a few forms of Gematria. And because I usually only use two forms, once in a while I'll use a different one. But uh, I just want to make it simple, short, to the point, so you understand what I'm saying. And uh, I'll leave a link to this video series in my description of this video here. But uh, I just know that, you know, I go out and talk to people. I'll see them at the bar or something. There's no way people are going to remember what to go home and look up. They might come to my channel first and look it up, and then they can move on from there. So I figured I'd just make a video, you know. Anyway, basically what Gematria is, it's the practice of coding letters words, phrases into numbers. It's like a language of numbers. And it's been used for many years. It even goes back to Pythagoras. He even has a, his own form of it, Pythagorean Gematria. But I mean, when you think about it, it might sound ridiculous that it would be used in our language. But really, look, so like the Hebrew language or the Hebrew alphabet, they all, all the letters have a numeric value. The Greek alphabet literally has a numeric value. You got Roman numerals. And our language does too. It's just the problem is that you've never been told them. And the reason that you haven't been taught this is because it's basically a secret way of communicating by the elites who control us. And they don't want you to know this. And by elites, I mean the Freemasons, the Zionist Jews, the Jesuits, the Church of England, the royal family, the Catholic Church. You know, it's whatever you want to call it. They're all interrelated. It's all the same type of people, just different groups. These same people are the ones who invented the calendars, you know, the Gregorian, the Julian, and they love syncing the gematria up of events with the dates to match the numbers and whatnot. But literally, once you learn just the two forms of gematria that I'm going to show you, if you start watching my videos, they'll make a lot more sense. You'll be able to read news articles, watch TV, do all kinds of things, and start seeing the patterns that are actually being put in front of you and how things are actually really coded. It's not made up. You'll also start to see how the elite group literally controls almost every aspect of our lives, even. I mean, it's why new trends start. That's why certain words become popular, because they're a certain code. You know, at a certain time. It's why the television is called programming. Because they are literally programming you to follow these stupid trends and whatever else. And they're just sitting back and laughing at you. Literally anything that they can do to keep you preoccupied and not really care about what's actually going on in the world. People even get murdered by these numbers. I mean, just think of all the recent celebrity deaths. They were all super coded. A lot of these elite people either worship Satan or they worship the planet Saturn and they believe in ritual sacrifices. They either believe that they get power in these numbers or they really do get some type of magic, voodoo, whatever you want to call it in these numbers. I mean, just think about the phrase power in numbers or maybe God or the universe or whatever you want to call it is all about numerology it's all coded with these numbers and this some type of structure and maybe these people just know how to how to abuse it or how to make it align or maybe they're just putting things out because they know that it fits with whatever's coming next you know maybe they just there's a lot more in this world going on than i can explain or than i even know or than most people even know but i am certain that this coding it does exist. It is happening. I've proved it multiple times, and so have other people. Over and over, we have shown how this how this coding syncs up. 
it seems insane, but once you start learning it, you'll be able to understand it a lot better as well. But anyway, let's move on. I'm going to show you the two forms of gematria that I always use. Like I said, once in a while I'll use the Jewish gematria or something else, but the two basic forms is what I'm going to show you. And hopefully everything that I just said makes sense. There really is a lot more that I could talk about. But like I said, I'm trying to make this short. I want to show you how the coding works and whatever else. So anyway, the first form of gematria is called simple English gematria. Now when you're like reading a news article or something, you'll notice on like CNN, they might highlight a certain phrase they'll put in parentheses. If you type that in, you'll find a number and then you can compare it to what else is going on in the world. I mean, that's a lot of what I do. And you'll start seeing tons of the patterns. But anyway, simple English gematria, literally, all it is is there's 26 letters in our alphabet. So A is the first letter. A would equal 1. B equals 2. C equals 3. And so on. So say you had the word Dan, my name. D would be 4 plus 1 plus 14 for the N, right? D-A-N. It would be 18, 19. So my name equals... 19 in Gematria. So like I said, very simple. You can take this, you can, you know, find out the Gematria of your family and see how it syncs up or just things in your life and see how it syncs up. It's actually pretty amazing how it all works. But anyway, you know, a lot of these people, they love coding the Bible and things dealing with the Bible, you know. And look at this coding here. I know Zach has this on his video as well, but it's just one of the most easiest blatant ones that you can put up. The word Jesus, so J equals 10. J is the 10th letter of the alphabet. 10 plus E is the 5th letter. S is the 19th letter. U the 21st. S again the 19th. If you add all them up, it equals 74. The word Joshua, the English translation of Jesus. If you add up all them letters, 10 plus 15 plus 19 plus 8 plus 21 plus 1. I mean, it shows you over here. That equals 74. Even some forms, they write it as this. Yeshua, or however you pronounce it. If you write that out, it adds up to 74. Jesus was a Messiah. Messiah equals 74. He died on the cross. Cross equals 74. And the reason I put Oregon in here is because the United States was based off of the Bible. Literally, tons of other examples. Uh, in Zach's video, he talks a lot about New York being based on Revelation and tons of 39 connections. But Oregon is the 33rd state. Oregon is the only state that adds up to 74 in simple gematria. Or just gematria in general. Jesus died on the cross at the age of 33 is what we're told. Just interesting, you know, cross, all these 74 connections. Oregon, the only state that adds up to 74, and it is the 33rd state. A few other interesting 74s, you know, especially in regards to ISIS and everything else that's supposedly going on right now. All the fake media that they're giving you. Muhammad equals 74. The word gospel equals 74. Interesting too, I never put it in here, but the word Lucifer equals 74. Also, if you just write out simple English and gematria, every one of them words individually adds up to 74. Also, in regards to the United States, and I talked about the Freemasons and whatnot, the word Masonic equals 74. A lot of people don't know that the first third party political party in the United States was called the Anti-Masonic Party. And that's literally because they believe that the Freemasons murdered this guy, William Morgan, and they were getting too much power in the government and whatever. So super interesting. I mean, look at the world we have right now. Anyway, so that's simple English gematria. Very, very easy to do, you know, just follow the alphabetical order. The other one I'm going to talk about is called Pythagorean gematria. It's actually uh, on this website here that I'm using as a calculator. They call it English reduction. 
But look at this here. Pythagoras. Good English reduction. Pythagoras of Samos. Look at his name. In, in Pythagorean Gematria, even, his name adds up to 74. Anyway, in Pythagorean Gematria, literally, it all works the same way. So A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3. But when you get to, like, so I is 9, J is the 10th letter. And what you do is you take 1 plus 0. So, like, 10. 10 is 1 and 0, so 1 plus 0. So J would equal 1. Um... R is the 18th letter of the alphabet, so you take 1 plus 8, so R would equal 9. The only difference with Pythagorean Gematria, you, other than simplifying it down, is that there's an S, K, and a V exception. S is the only letter that it adds up to 19, so when you break it down, it's 1 plus 9, which equals 10, so you'd either have to break it down again to make it a 1, or it can be 10. So S can either be 1 or 10. Also K and V are both connected to the 11, the master builder number, which you don't have to break down. So it would be K could equal 2 for 1 plus 1, or it can also still equal 11. V can equal 4 because of 2 plus 2, or it can also equal 22 for being the 22nd letter. So this one is a little bit more complicated, but it's actually still very simple. All you're doing is just simplifying the numbers, and you just have to remember the S, K, and V exception. And I mean, I don't even really use the K or the V exception that often. I do use the S exception, but it's not like, I'm not using it how you would think, like just adding an S at the end of a letter, like uh, to add more or whatever. I'm not doing that. You know, like the word Sinai. Like Moses went to the top of Mount Sinai that starts with an S. I use it on that because it's 25 or 34. Lots of 34 coding around Moses. So anyway, here's a few examples of Pythagorean Gematria. If you write out Pythagorean Gematria, it equals 96. If you just write out the word Pythagorean in Pythagorean Gematria, it equals 58. Interesting, I've talked a lot about the Freemasons. I mean... Freemasonry in Pythagorean Gematria also equals 58. The number 96, if you write out the word Freemason in simple English Gematria, it also adds up to 96. Anyway, let's look at a few uh, Pythagorean Gematria words then, or phrases. Paris, France. So literally P is the 16th letter, so it breaks down to 1 plus 6. So it equals 7, and so on. A is the first. R is the 18th. So it would be 8 plus 1 equals 9, and so on. And you add it up, it adds up to 56. Just interesting that Isis, who supposedly attacked Paris, France, in regular Gematria equals 56 in simple Gematria. But also just other things that are, have been significant this year. Black Lives Matter, B, the second letter, L, the 12th letter, so 1 plus 2 equals 3, and so on. You add that up, Black Lives Matter, 56. Obama's mentioned a lot about climate change. And Pythagorean Gematria equals 56. The day that Julius Caesar died, <laughs> it adds up to 56 in Pythagorean Gematria. Also interesting with the S exception, Osama bin Laden equals 56. And basically all you do is add 9. So Osama bin Laden is also 47 and 110. The World Trade Center is 110 stories tall. And this is in uh, simple Gematria. So, sorry. In Pythagorean Gematria, Osama bin Laden is 47 and 56. Because you just add 9 because of the S exception. Saddam Hussein equals 47 and 56. Adolf Hitler even adds up to 56 with, there's no S, but 56, he died at the age of 56 in April. In simple Gematria, April equals 56. He also adds up to 110, born on the 110th day of the year. So hopefully you understand how Gematria works a little bit better. Just want to end it on showing some of the mainstream articles we got all on the same day. We had a Fredericksburg, Pennsylvania pileup. And Fredericksburg, 146, we had the Fairfield, Oklahoma earthquake, 146, John Calipari was ejected 
after 146 seconds all on the same day. That's how it works.